Welcome to Fake News Who Stifle the Truth podcast, where we tackle how fake news undermines media landscapes of the Philippines. In this episode, we will discuss misleading information and how it affects our country. I am Leo Aguilar, and together with me is Judy Abayan. So fake news is a term used to describe misleading or false stories propagated as real news. So this may be distributed via social media, email, text messages, or on non-digital media. Fake news is often disseminated by political parties or leaders attempting to sway public opinion. It's also spread by terrorist groups and other organizations intent on misleading the public to further their goals. In some cases, fake news has led to violence and hate crimes against groups targeted by such propaganda. So, Ms. Abayon, um, since it is said that fake news is believed to be spread by sympathizers of political ideologies, can you elaborate on that and perhaps give an example of these scenarios? Yes! So, these people may present false information as true in an attempt to sway public opinion, This is often done to promote the interests of the government or corporation sponsoring fake news. Additionally, fake news is sometimes spread by whistleblowers seeking financial gain or other motivations. This may present also as a um, their way to manipulate information either to discredit the source or gain personal profit through business partnership. False information can also be spread maliciously by people with mental health issues who target public dissemination methods. For example, I remember uh, this interview conducted by Kayleen Delvin from BBC where it showed how fake news is very relevant and rampant during election. She interviewed John, not his real name a social media manager or modulator. I don't know how they call this kind of person, but they are the one in charge of managing social medias of a specific politician or depending on who who their client will be. So what they did is they will boost support for their clients by means of spreading falsehood. Like imagine paying a lot of trolls just to discredit other people and this kind of business running for many years digging other people's life or worse making just clearly fake news just to ruin their image he even shared this specific scenario wherein i think it's during 2013 election if you're familiar where they got a politician's number and they photoshopped it after that sent the text message pretending to be the politician saying he was looking for mistress so imagine the effect of that with this image then eventually their client won you know i actually view the fake news spreading like a wildfire ano? Um, especially these days na super powerful na ng technology and since we are talking about media landscapes of the philippines um how do you think did this impact the legitimate sources of information? I believe that these fake news peddlers, of course, try to manipulate us about thinking that they are the real one. So please share your thoughts on this. I actually agree. You know, many people choose to click on links to open articles within these pages spreading misinformation even further. This can also lead to controversies wherein entire countries are led to astray by fake news. This has leads to riot, civil unrest, and even deaths among those exposed to viral fake news stories. Additionally, fake news is often viral and easy to digest. Some fake news stories are so shocking that anyone who sees it will eventually digest everything as if it was real. This can lead to major societal problem again, riots. Example of those riots would be a protest or even a simple war on Facebook. Hate crimes and political instability, which clearly our country have right now. Also, mostly, I notice the victims of this fake news are adults to the point that everything they see in social media, especially Facebook, they would easily believe it and that's why 
no matter how we try to educate them how to check um, for legitimacy of this kind of information, they would still be fooled. And fake news will always be part of our everyday lives. I think as individuals, meron kasi tayong ugali eh. We have this mentality to believe in one-sided stories without considering if it's real or not. By simply just sawing a post on Facebook about shaming someone, naming kabit siya ni ganto ganyan, nag-post yung ganto ganyan, kabit siya ganyan ganyan. Maniniwala tayo agad without even knowing the story of that so-called kabit. Kasi, hindi natin, um, kinoconsider na natin yung perspective nung nag-spread ng information na yon. Aside from that then is, technology evolved. We always post everything without even thinking what would be the effect of that. Even if just woke up, OOTD, um, food of the day. We always want our followers, our friends to be updated with our everyday activity. And, With that, that kind of mentality and activity that we have, it serves as the fuel to those enablers which they use to keep the fire burning for fake news. Talking about its impact naman, you say from the legitimate sources of news, I have read this article from UP Expert. Technically, it's a video, but I read the article of it. It says that people who spread misinformation actually is directing that this fake news was brought by the media. And they were brought by the government itself. So imagine the impact of that to regular Filipinos. The confusion will arise and of course we will get penalized as a society living with untrue facts. You know what? I am very much agreeing with you on that. You know, fake news has been here for a very long time. I actually wonder about the initiatives, of course, that our government is doing right now. And um, putting that in mind, what do you think is the best way to get rid of the culture behind the spreading of fake news? If not, minimize it. Because according to the World Literacy Foundation, it is destructive because it attacks our societal beliefs. Hindi ko na to papahabain, Leo, pero I think the best way to avoid fake news is to think before you click. That phrase may sound so cliche, but it really makes sense, you know. Thinking before clicking. You should always verify the source, not just once, twice, but many times. Kung ilang times mo man gusto. Especially nowadays where we have these so-called influencers, wherein they have a lot of audience waiting for them. It's really important to think if, should I share this? Should I post this? What would be the effect of that? What would people would benefit from this post? Or this will just be causing chaos within them. The world we live in nowadays, or even before, is too much chaotic. So, we, I encourage each and every one of you to be the change. Dominate it with factual and legitimate up information that would awaken each individual. Let's be literate and woke because that would serve as a tool for us to get out of the dangerously misinformed society. That's all. You heard it, guys. Of course, literacy is the key to differentiate what is fact and fake. Alright, I think that wraps up our episode. Thank you very much, Miss Judy Abaya. Again, manipulated information can cause serious damage when communities believe it's real and act upon it accordingly. Fake news is believed to be spread by political parties pursuing ideological ends or by independent actors looking for financial gain. Whatever the reason, fake news is rapidly growing worldwide and will continue to cause social problems unless stopped immediately. My name is Janleo Aguilar. Thank you for listening and have a great day.